بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد وعدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم موعظه ذرفت منها العيون ووجلت منها القلوب Hazrat Irbad bin Sariya radiyallahu says once Nabi alayhi salatu was salam gave us a very very moving speech lecture bayan he delivered a very motivational talk which made our eyes flow and tear so uh, it's such a such effect and 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 so overwhelming wajilat minha alqulub that our hearts were even uh, trembling our hearts began to melt with the words of nabi alayhi salatu wassalam so let me explain that the lectures of nabi alayhi salam were not long we don't need eloquent speaker we don't need uh, orators we need good listeners fa qulna ya rasulullah إن هذه الموعظة مودع. This seems to be a farewell speech. فماذا تعهد إلينا? What do you enjoin us to do? So it was advice that would be pertinent and important and imperative for the ummah. So Saba, knowing the situation, ask for some final advice. Some advice that we need to. Uh, remember and uh, uh, make crucial and essential and, and vital for our life. So Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, O Kama Qal Qad Taraktukum Ala Al Bayda Layluha Kanahariha. I am leaving you upon the path of brightness whose night is like its day. Whose night? Is like its day. لا يزيغ عنها بعد إلا هالك. And no one will deviate from it after I am gone. But the one who is doomed. So I am giving you advice. Stick to this advice, and that will be a means of your protection and your salvation. So what I am going to tell you is a means of your salvation and protection. It will. Be a means of escape and rescue. May yaish min kum fasayra ikhtilafan kathira. Whoever will survive and love will see great conflict and discord. Faalaykum bima araftum min sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin. So I urge you, I endorse you, I encourage you. To adhere to what is my sunnah, my way of life, and the path of the rightly guided khulafa, abdu alayha bin nawajiz, grab, hold steadfast, cling onto it, latch, embrace, clutch, grab onto it. So the sunnah is a salvation for every era. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالطَّعَةِ And hold steadfast to obedience even if it is an Abyssinian leader still follow him فَإِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنِ كَالْجَمَنِ الْأَنِفِ A believer is a, like a camel that is, is uh, tied up with a ring in its nose and حَيْثُ مَا قِيدَ إِنْ قَادَ Wherever it is driven it complies. So compliance, we are a ayah, we are a verse, we are about sunnah. A believer is always complying. So many people are carrying EDCs, everyday carry items. We need this and you need this for your protection and you need this. But there's other EDCs which we overlook. So then is a balanced view. Miswak, you cannot leave home without miswak. You cannot leave home without a tasbih. How you know how to use these tools? Do you know how to utilize a miswak, the sunnah methodology of holding? Where do you start in the mouth? How do you uh, trim the miswak? How long should a miswak last? Which are the occasions to utilize the miswak? 
So we are witnessing in Iran now when Nabi alayhi salam said, you will see complete uh, disintegration of society and humanity where the houses of Allah will be shut down. You will even see the house of Allah, the Baytullah shut down based on evidence which is inconclusive. You will see Allah's awamir and commands being broken open defiance of the commands of Allah, even if it is the Mubarak lands, the lands of Anbiya. That's why Mawlana Yusuf used to say, you can live in the land of disbelief and idolatry, but you do the work of Anbiya, you will be in Aman, you will be in peace and protection. And he said, you can be living in the lands of Anbiya, but you don't do the work of Nubuwa, the effort of Nubuwa, inviting to Allah and His Rasul and seeing this deen come alive in the world, then you will not live in peace, but it will be complete annihilation. So you will see that uh, even this effort of Anbiya, there will be encouragement to stop it. There will be opposition that the work of Nubuwa, why laqad arsalna rusulana, Anbiya came one by one with the effort of Dawat and Tabliq and inviting to Allah. So many ayat of Quran is with regards to Dawah. The whole Quran is a Dawat. Ad'u ila Allah. Nabi is a Da'i. Quran is a Dawat. Allah yad'u ila Dar is Salam. Allah is Da'i. But you'll see open opposition, open resistance, open challenge to this work of Nubuah and Dawat and antagonism. And you will find support. You want to do wrong. You want to oppress humanity. You want to take innocent lives. For Batil, there will be open support and encouragement. So the world is looking for guidance. We need to know what to do in the terms of deen and dunya, and there's no room for compromise. Whether it is a person stranded in an island, whether a person is in a hot hospital bed, the command of salah is not forgiven, except in certain conditions which we make mashwa the ulama. If you can just move your eyes, then read salah with your eyes as well. So importance for our preservation and for generations to come, so that's part of child safety is we preserve the deen primarily and the dunya as well. So we're not going to get into the topic of giving them cell phones, promoting television, movies, etc. Whether we give them foods that are toxic like takeaway food, junk food, fuzzy drinks, sugar lace sweets and chocolates, foods that have preservatives, additives, harmful toxic ingredients, GMOs, etc. That is uh, outside uh, this discussion and we have discussed it in detail in, in our Qiyama series. Besides education for children which generally people are uh, indoctrinating and, and, and encouraging, important is to teach our children everyday skills, whether it's welding, whether it's farming, agriculture, carpentry, plumbing, electrical, so whether you give each child a different skill besides the normal things that he is busy with every day, but he should learn a skill. Likewise, cyber security, CCTV cameras, installation, hacking, etc. That's also a skill and art which we, we need to make our kids proficient in. Generally, we consider outside the home as dangerous, but sometimes your home may be the one of the most dangerous places for your child. So besides vehicle injuries, children are more likely to die from an accident injury they sustained at home than any other place. So it's called unintentional injuries and more than half of child deaths are caused by these injuries which happens at home. So whether it is a fire, whether it's submersion of water, suffocation, poisoning, falls, etc. These are, are, are very uh, important uh, avenues where we need to do preventative measures, take adequate safety measures 
and have uh, supervision in place to make sure that uh, our children are protected. And globally, traffic injuries uh, and drowning were the leading causes of, of, of death of children under five uh, with regards to fatalities. So uh, safety at home and in protocols for safety as well. So children should have a code word with regards to uh, a situation which is problematic where they can use, where the parents will know it's a code red. Likewise, if somebody has to pick them up and say, my parents sent me to you to, 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 to take you to them, etc., then they should ask them, what is the code word? Likewise, nowadays, it's very easy to have these tracking devices. It's not very expensive as well. Uh, it's a tracking device, whether it's a watch, something can be tied around their neck, like people put Tauvises as well. Now we need GPS Tauvises as well. You can access the, the conversation which your children are going through. You can They can press a panic as well. They can sell in the SOS location-wise. It's a lot of features and a lot of trackers out there. We need to do research based on size, battery life, which is very important, practicality, uh, and it shouldn't be that something that you buy, you got a Josh, there's been incidents, we use it, and then after that, it's in the shelf as well. Likewise, just some basic protocols if the child is alone at home, and uh, they shouldn't be at home at, uh, alone at all, but for some reason, if they are at home and, and they cannot get hold, uh, of anybody, what number should they call, who should they call, protocol should be in place. Likewise, if there's a smell of gas, there's a steaming circuit, etc., if they see a fire, uh, different situations, we, we need to prep them and, and, and give them an idea. So, so this don't knowledge starts from the cradle to the grave. So starting from, from uh, road traffic accidents, to drowning, etc., that has risen globally. So more people die from road traffic injuries than from HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, or diarrheal diseases. And even children between the ages of 5 and 29, the major cause of death is road traffic injuries. So if you look at uh, mortality rates and, and traffic crashes, 260,000 children from the age of zero to 19, and this is old stats. We haven't, uh, we can look up the recent stats and we will see it's, it's increased phenomenally. Likewise, children have accounted for 21% of all road traffic injuries, which is related to deaths, bi'iznillah, globally. And uh, one in five childhood injuries and or deaths are road traffic injuries. So, uh, even though the forecast by 2030, it will be the fifth leading cause of death worldwide and seventh leading cause of the DALY, which is your disability adjusted life years lost. So if you look at it firstly as pedestrians, so crossing the road, which side to walk, etc. We need to educate them. Then cyclists as well, uh, 3 to 15 percent. Uh, injuries etc then as vehicle occupants 50 percent of all child road traffic accident uh, is caused because of negligence with regards to that so whether it's have them having a seat belt etc uh, protocols then teenagers as drivers so generally uh, teenagers are a high risk group with regards to vehicles shutting on the cell phone etc uh, accelerating zero to 200 a rage of madness. So, uh, statistics are alarming. Uh, the number of children who have been, been injured and disabled, forget deaths, just injuries and disability is around 10 million each year. So, uh, the, the precautions which we need to do and we need to, to take, so whether it is uh, seatbelt wearing, whether it is kids that are using bicycles, uh, other mobile uh, toys and items to wear helmets. Likewise, uh, visibility, if there is a situation where they need to be seen and get reflective clothing, reflective gear. gear. Uh, teenagers as well, How, where, when do we give them the vehicle? What have training have they been given? Uh, driving lessons, uh, high-speed driving lessons. 
not to be distracted, not to be on the cell phone, etc. And a simple thing like in the driveway itself, so the parents, the father gets into the car, he wants to reverse it, salah time, etc. The children are outside and he drives over the kids as well. So just a protocol for your driveway that you will not drive the vehicle until you've done an inspection. You sure the kids are in the house. Likewise, when you go out, make sure the door is closed so nobody can run behind you. Children want to love, they love the parents, they want to run after the father, etc. So it's a risk factor. Uh, so designate a safe spot for children and uh, a no-go zone. Likewise, uh, the cars, the vehicle, we, we drive in the driveway, we leave the car, it is open, sometimes the keys are there. Children have been known to lift the handbrakes, to start the car, to have accelerated uh, and, 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 and been very disastrous. Likewise, them hiding in the vehicles and getting locked inside and, and, and passing away through suffocation in the boost of the car. Um, passing away through uh, heat strokes, etc. So one is the, the, the safety with regards to that side, then safety with regards to burns. And uh, there's been a lot of incidents and the, the child burn deaths is around two and a half percent. So around 34,000 lives uh, can be saved when, when, when inshallah life precautions are taken. Remember, the, with taqdeer and destiny, the time to go, you will go. But precaution-wise, uh, we should take precautions. And that precaution is calculated precaution. So now at the moment, uh, the, the, we're not going to get into that topic with regards to vaccines. But uh, people are saying you need to take precautions. So yes, take precautions. But have you identified the virus first? How true is the virus? How dangerous is it? And if it is dangerous and it, and it is harmful, then what measures can you take? Did you have you have you implemented Tibet Nabawi? Uh, so much solutions in Quran and Hadith. There's alternate medicine as well. Is this the only option the earth could come up with? Secondly, is how long does it take to develop a vaccine? How long does it take to uh, what ingredients are there in the vaccine? Are they beneficial? Are they harmful? So it's calculated. A believer doesn't do things because of your say, but everything is calculated. So with regards to burns as well, if you look at it on an average from 1 to 14 year old children, if they've taken the kids that of that age, around 1.7 billion of the earth's population, then 44,000 children lose their lives uh, due to negligence as well. So if we look at the burn injury and the incident rates, then these stats are enough for us to realize that uh, precaution needs to be taken. Majority of fire related deaths are caused by smoke inhalation of toxic gases. So it's not even the fire. The fire actually, that, that says result, the flames, the burns account for 30% of fire related deaths and injuries. And the uh, majority of fires that kill or injure children are more residential fires. So one is the fire itself, but one is the smoke, smoke inhalation, toxic gases. And uh, these statistics are uh, mentioned so that we get an idea of generally where's the negligence, the rufflet. Majority of children ages four and younger who are hospitalized for burn related injuries suffer from burn skulls uh, or contact burns. So the, the skulls, the burns 65%, but contact burns 20%. And uh, fire kills about 500 children aged from 14 and under in a very short period of time. So sometimes we consider a fire as a hazard, etc. But we say in skulls, uh, burns, which is hot tap, hot water, hot tap water skull burns, cause more deaths and hospitalizations than any other hot liquid burns. So negligence of leaving them alone, uh, having them access to the tap, leaving them in the bath, and knowing they can open up the hot water, etc. So if we look at even home fires and related injuries is mostly with regards to home cooking equipment. So most fire related deaths are from residential fires by uh, negligence, whether it's smoking materials, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's uh, the parents that leave their lighters, their matches, uh, other uh, flammable items in, in clear sight. And uh, it's mostly with regards to carelessness. Most of the common uh, thermal burn injuries among children aged 14 and under are with simple things. Hair curlers, curling irons, room heaters, so the heater, 
So is a child safe? He does. How how negligent are we? Do we leave the child uh, uh, alone in the room? Uh, ovens, uh, irons, uh, fireworks. So uh, we we give them access to the fireworks and and matches, but uh, it can be dangerous. Likewise, skull burns to children between the age of six months to two years are caused by hot foods or liquid spilled in the kitchen or a food is prepared and, and, and served. So, uh, one in five children under the age of uh, five are due to die of home fires while they are asleep. So, residential fires, what uh, measures, precautions have we taken? Uh, what smoke alarms, do we have uh, extinguishers? Do we have uh, uh, fire blankets? Do we have uh, hoses, etc.? So precautions need to be taken, have smoke alarms, have sprinkler systems in place, um, train children with regards to all of these items, all of these safeties, all uh, educate them of how to use it in case of a fire, what should be done, uh, a fire escape plan, etc. And all these items of rusk have a place where it could be placed where it is no access to that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one in all. The amal for today is تَبْلُغُ الْحِلْيَةُ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ حَيْثُ يَبْلُغُ الْوُضُو That uh, making wudu, we need to make wudu properly. Try to stay in wudu condition all the time. Try to make fresh wudu if you can. The jewelry of a believer will reach as far as their wudu reaches. So that will uh, shine on the day of Qiyamah, the places of purity. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ